All aboard. Five minutes after six, a little time for stragglers, so call the meeting to order. Five minutes after six o'clock on February 18, 2020. This is the uh, annual meeting of the Orleans Southwest Union Elementary School District. Um, the warning uh, has been distributed and there are seven articles to go through. Uh, I was elected moderator last year for one year, so I'm going to open the meeting. And the first uh, article of business uh, is going to be to elect officers of the uh, district. And then we will uh, move through the articles in order. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions about the process of the meeting, please pitch them to me. You are allowed to do that and encouraged to do that if you don't understand what's going on. Yes, Catherine, even you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. Um, first, is there anyone here who's not a resident of one of the three? Four. Four districts. Thank you. All right. You are not allowed to vote, sir. Right, right. Okay. okay. Very good. Everybody else is. All right, then. Let's turn to uh, Article 1. Uh, please listen to Article 1. Article 1 is to elect the following school district officers for the ensuing year. The school district meeting moderator, the district clerk, the district treasurer, and an alternate district treasurer. Uh, we'll do that one at a time, and I'll ask you for nominations, and then uh, when we get done with all the nominations, we'll close the nominations and then uh, vote accordingly. All right? So, for a term of uh, one year, are there nominations for school district meeting moderator? I nominate Stephen Chai Hoffer. Close enough. Okay. <laughs> I nominate Steve. Are there other nominations for a moderator for one year? Other, other nominations for moderator? Hearing none, and with unanimous consent, close nominations. Uh, there's only one nominee, so uh, is there a motion for the clerk to cast one ballot for the nominee? Norman uh, moves. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of the clerk casting one ballot for Steve Freihofner to be school district meeting moderator for a term of one year, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstain? The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, the next position to be elected is that of district clerk. Are there nominations for district clerk? I nominate Laura Lee. Laura Lee is nominated. Second. And second, second. supported. Yes. That would be Laura Lee Wheeler, I believe. Are there other nominations for district clerk? Other nominations? Hearing none, if there's no objection by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations. And uh, is there a motion for the clerk to pa cast? Motion that the clerk pass one ballot for Laura Lee Wheeler for district clerk for one year. Is there a second? Is there a second to that motion? Michael, Michael Gray seconds. Um, all right. So the motion has been made and seconded to uh, have the uh, clerk cast one ballot for Laura Lee Wheeler for district clerk for one year. Any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of having the clerk cast one ballot for Laura Lee Wheeler for district clerk of the uh, Union Elementary School District, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstain, and Laura Lee is elected. The next position is that of district treasurer. 
district treasurer. Are there nominations for district treasurer? Alberta Miller is nominated. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations for district treasurer? Hearing none, if there's no objection by unanimous consent, we'll close nominations. And is there a motion for the clerk to cast one ballot uh, for uh, district treasurer for <coughs> Alberta Miller? All rise moves. And second, okay, very well. Um, all right, it's been moved and seconded that the clerk cast one ballot for, uh, in the name of Alberta Miller for district treasurer. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of the clerk casting one ballot for district treasurer and that ballot for Alberta Miller, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, abstain. And Alberta Miller is elected district treasurer of the Union Elementary School District. The last position uh, to be elected for officers is that of alternate district treasurer. Are there nominations for alternate district treasurer? I don't know that I know who the current one is. Was they appointed? The current one is Tammy Burton. Okay. Okay. I, I don't see Tammy, so maybe she'll be pleased that we're thinking of her. She'll be okay with They appointed her and she accepted it. Tammy Furry is nominated. Are there other nominations for alternate district treasurer? Other nominations? Hearing none, if there's no objection, by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations. And is there a motion for the clerk to cast one ballot for Tammy Furry for the position of alternate district treasurer? All rise moves. Is there a second? Second. Second? A couple of places. It's been moved and seconded uh, that Tammy Furry, that the clerk uh, cast one ballot uh, for Tammy Furry to be alternate district treasurer. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of the clerk casting one uh, ballot for Tammy Furry to be alternate district treasurer, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, abstaining. Uh, and it appears Tammy Furry has been elected uh, and is elected alternate district treasurer. And that concludes uh, Article 1, the election of the district. Can I ask people to state their name when they're seconding or anything? Because I'm not familiar with the story that's here. But um, <laughs> well, it would be helpful for the note takers. Yeah, so, good idea. If you Sorry. remember, please. Announce your name, even though we already know you, most of us. Uh, let's proceed to Article 2. Please listen to Article 2. Shall the voters of the school district authorize the following salaries to be paid for the officers and directors of the school district? School board chair, zero dollars a year. School board member, zero dollars a year. District treasurer, two thousand five hundred dollars a year. Alternate district treasurer, $25 per day's worked, and district clerk, $25 a year. What is your pleasure with respect to that article? Article is moved. Ginger. Ginger. All right, is there a second? The motion has been uh, made and seconded. Please listen to the uh, article as moved. Uh, shall the voters of the school district authorize the following salaries to be paid for the officers and directors of the school district? School board chair, zero dollars. School board member, zero dollars. District treasurer, twenty-five hundred dollars a year. Alternate district treasurer, twenty-five dollars per day's work, and district clerk, twenty-five dollars a year. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Or eyes. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to uh, this is Ori <coughs> Excuse me. I'd like to offer an amendment. Last year we had agreed 
to pay the district clerk $30 a year. So therefore, I'm making an amendment that the $25 in here for district clerk go to 30 A motion has been made to amend Article 2 to provide that the district clerk be paid $30 a year. Is there a second to that motion? <coughs> Victoria seconds. Is there any further discussion of the amendment? We're voting on the amendment now. Any discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, let's vote on the amendment. All those in favor of amending Article 2 to change the uh, compensation for the district clerk to $30 a year. $30 a year. Please say aye. aye. All those opposed? Abstain. And the amendment passes. So now the main motion, uh, please listen while I read the main motion as amended. Shall the voters of the school district authorize the following salaries to be paid for the officers and directors of the school district? School board chair, zero. School board member, zero dollars. District treasurer, $2,500 a year. Alternate district <coughs> treasurer, $25 per day worked. District clerk, $30 a year. $30 a year. Uh, so is there someone who wants to move that main motion? We already did. You did? Mm -hmm. Let me write that down. All right. So uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Article 2 as amended, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, abstain. Article 2 as amended is passed. Let's move to Article 3. Article 3, please listen to Article 3 to hear and act upon the reports of the Orleans Southwest Union Elementary School District and Part 2. Uh, to elect the following school district officers for the ensuing year. From Woodbury, a school director for a term of three years. From Hardwick, one school director for a term of three years. And from Hardwick, a second school director for a term of two years left on a three-year term. And from Greensboro, a school district director for a term of three years. So let's address the uh, first part of that article uh, first. Uh, what is your pleasure with respect to the reports of the Orleans Southwest Union Elementary School District? What is your pleasure? Yes, sir. Patrick Flood. Uh, Patrick Flood, Woodbury. I assume we're talking about this report. Yes. OK. Uh, I move it uh, be accepted as printed. There's a motion to accept the report uh, as printed. <coughs> is there a second? There is a second. John Miller. John second. Miller. Seconds. It's been moved and seconded to uh, accept the Orleans Southwest Union Elementary School District report. No, finish your moved and seconded. Any further discussion? <laughs> Well, I have, I have a couple questions. I'm not sure where they belong. One question, which is, uh, I think is referenced in the report, but I, I'd like a little more explanation about has to do with the question of what I think you're referring to as equity in here. But my question is, last summer or last spring, the supervisory union had um, quite a challenge related to racial discrimination and before the previous superintendent left. And there... We can't hear you. Okay. Uh, my question has to do with, with what I think is referenced in the report as equity. I could be wrong. And that's what I'm trying to clarify because last spring the supervisory union had quite a challenge related to some racial discrimination issues. And have, I assume those have been addressed. 
and it may belong somewhere else than in this report, but it certainly, it started in the elementary schools, as I recall. So I'm wondering, is that what's referred to in here as equity, that that was dealt with? I just would like some kind of update or report on that. Can I ask where he found it in the report? Because I didn't find anything. Uh, I, I, well, in the list of successes or something, I think there was a line. I was going to ask where you saw that. Oh, OK. I well, I could be reading it all wrong. Patrick Flood. Patrick Flood, OK. Well, I didn't hear. I only heard a little look. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it in my letter? Well, if you look on page 7, for example, I just picked this right up. I think it's several, several places. Uh, the district is committed to continued work to promote equity in our schools. Yeah. And the leadership team has participated, blah, 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 uh, excuse me, uh, in equity literacy. And I'm trying to determine what that refers to. Is there someone who can speak to that? Adam. Adam Rosenberg, superintendent. So, uh, yeah, this, this was something that started last year, obviously, uh, predated me. and. Um, uh, Joanne, the previous superintendent, actually did a lot of work securing an equity literacy grant from the Agency of Education at the state level. Um, they're actually federal dollars that uh, they awarded to three different supervisory unions in the state, and we were one of them. Um, so I kind of inherited that work and was charged with um, the execution of the you know, the, the grant proposal, which was submitted, again, prior to my arrival. Um, part of that was a, I think it was a four-session <coughs> training for um, our leadership team, which includes our six principals and our four central office directors and myself. So it was uh, an equity literacy training that took place in Montpelier uh, that was put on by um, CQ Strategies. And um, I thought it was an excellent training, but that sort of got the leadership team on the same page. Uh, in addition to that, we have funding to support a facilitator who's been meeting with an equi equity literacy team uh, monthly. We actually met yesterday. That was our February meeting. And um, the goal of that team is to identify, first of all, you know, run through a series of protocols so we all get on the same page in our own understanding of um, equity and um, <coughs> cultural sensitivity. And then, based on surveys, based on um, uh, other data, identify professional development that we can <coughs> then provide to staff members, community members. And we're in the process, the ongoing process of that right now. At, at a higher level, I meet, um, I think it's going to be about four times this year when all is said and done with the other two representatives of the other two supervisory unions and we're also developing some um, pro uh, some professional development for all three regions so that whatever we offer will, will be open to the members of uh, Montpelier and the Bennington system and um, same with whatever they offer. So that's where we are there. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. If I could just ask a quick follow-up. What's your assessment on the progress that's been made? So those are the activities. Yeah. Yeah, so great question. So I think we've taken sort of a bifurcated approach. So at the SU level with the three SU work, I mentioned the four meetings, I've been really impressed with the progress that, that's been made. We've identified some specific professional development that we're going to offer. Um, the provider of that is going to be Bennington College. Um, and there's, uh, if you go to last month's um, incidental report that I submitted, <coughs> there's a link to this, uh, this individual, the trainer's information and background. Uh, the work at the SU level, I think, um, got started slowly and uh, um, we've been meandering a bit, trying to find our way. So I haven't been as, um, I guess, as pleased with the way that's gone. But um, I have a follow-up meeting with a facilitator. Um, I'm hoping this Friday. And each time we have a meeting with a group, I follow up with her and we talk about next steps. 
Um, I am happy that we've identified someone actually who works at Hayes and uh, Hillary Maynard will be carrying, helping to carry this work on next year once our funds dry up June 30th and we don't have access to this facilitator. So it's someone who's part of our community already, who has a background in equity literacy, who's going to help us move the work forward. So I think um, I was feeling worse off about it last month, a couple of months ago, but I feel a little better now. That's an honest answer. All right, thank you. Adam, is there any plan, because it's not just delegated to our schools, is there any plan to take it into the community and offer education to people in general? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And actually, that was brought up at the last, uh, was it the, uh, the OSSU board meeting? Uh, there's a real, a real desire on the part of board members to, um, you know, provide intervention at the student level. And I think, you know, that naturally extends to families. So I'm hoping that once we satisfy the needs of the grant, and that's the other part, getting back to your question, that I've been kind of disappointed with. We're, we're catching up trying to satisfy the sort of unrealistic needs of this grant within the time frame. So my feeling is, you know, we'll get the best that we can get out of this, but let's set ourselves up for success the, the following year and the year after that. So that's going to be a major focus because it is a, a concern of the boards, and I know it's a concern that's carried over from last year and prior years. Yeah. <coughs> Ginger Atkin. Ginger Atkin. So I just wonder if you could explain to me what what we're talking about um, as equity literacy. Yeah. I'm not sure I understand when you use that term what we're saying. Yeah, oh, great question. I'm, I'm glad you asked it. So um, at the most basic level, it means ensuring that every student has the access to learning, um, to a positive environment, uh, to relationships that they need. So equity is not um, everything looking the same for every student, because uh, every student has different needs. I don't know if you've, you've seen the, um, the picture of the three students and they're three different sizes, they're looking over a fence, and if you give them the same size box, you know, some, some of them can't see over the fence, but you know, you give them the same resource. But when you mix it up, each one's able to see over the fence. One might have a smaller box than another. So, so that's equity, uh, it's about access. But when you begin to dig into it, there, there's also, you know, these layers of, of uh, cultural awareness. Um, you know, I think that we live in a very homogenous society, very white society. Um, that that's really not just Hardwick area; it's Vermont. Um, something that I noticed when I first moved here in the '90s from Boston, and. Uh, we need to provide students with an awareness of, of other cultures. Um, we're not just one culture that lives together. We're sort of a mixing pot, ho hopefully a melting pot of different cultures. And I think that, um, for example, you know, as a, as a teacher, I used to make certain references to certain TV shows, certain foods. And looking back, um, I, I know that I was connecting with kids who were from my culture. Uh, but there were other kids in that classroom who were not, I was not connecting with. Uh, so it's really all about acknowledging that uh, different students have different needs and they come from different backgrounds. And it's really our jobs as educators to identify that and make an effort to connect with that. Okay. Yep. Uh, all right. I just want to make a comment. I thought this was a good book the first year that we've put one together. But the minutes from the first meeting that we held for part of our organization from February 12 are missing. The minutes that start on page 15 are the continuation <coughs> of the meeting that we recessed and reconvened on March 15th. But we did have 45 minutes of a meeting that is missing. And also on page 17, um, I found an error that in my notes that I had taken under Article 7, we had agreed at the annual meeting to pay the clerk 30, and in here it says 25. So I'd like just that to be noted. It doesn't have to be an amended, but just <laughs> let the minutes for this meeting show that we had brought that to attention. 
<clears throat> okay, that's uh, that's a good observation. There was important business in the first meeting. Well, when we chose Robert's rules of order, for example. So. Uh. Patrick flooding in. Just this is a minor point, but on page four in the second paragraph, it looks like the sentence just doesn't yeah. end. <laughs> um, I, I'm guessing I know what the end of that sentence is, but it's missing. Oh yeah. That that yeah, is easily right. fixed. Unless I'm wrong. I mean, no, it probably can't. says we kept those, that those commitments or something, you know. But if it meets, if it's something else, maybe we should know. Puppies. It was puppies. We kept the puppies. We did keep the puppies. I do have another question, Mr. Monterey. <laughs> Please go ahead. Um, and this, I, you can rule me out of order here, but because it has to do with the budget, and we can discuss it under the budget. But there's reference in the document to using all of the surplus from last year. Um, but as far as I can tell, I, I don't see that number anywhere in this document. So it's either not in the document or I'm missing it and I would love to have somebody point out to me where it is. And again, we can talk about this under the budget if you'd rather. Yes, I think that'd be the appropriate okay. place. But thank you for bringing it up. Gives us time to scour the record. All right. <laughs> Is that Rose at the end? Yes. Uh, well, rather than me do it, and there's almost more of us than you, so maybe you should introduce <laughs> yourselves to us. But, but let's go down the table, and please say your name and from whence you hail. Sure. <clears throat> I'm Rose Modry from Greensboro. I am Phoebe Slater from Woodbury. Kim Silk from Woodbury. Samantha Friend from Greensboro. Lou Gargiulo from Standard. Catherine Ingram from Hardwick. Steve Freihoffner from Woodbury. Adam Rosenberg from Boston. <laughs> I'm uh, Patrick Pennick, principal here at Hardwick. Craig Wilson, principal at Woodbury. Justine Guthrie, principal at Lakeview. Mm -hmm. Justine Guthrie, principal at Lakeview. Thank you. Should have done that first. Thank you. Uh, Testing. Will you be the custodian of the microphone? We can't hear you. Can't hear me. No, 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 you got, there should be two microphones. There is Maybe one that right there. We should turn that on. The little green light yep, going on. Yep. All right. Um, I think one of these should be out here. <laughs> Very well. Hello. Any more discussion about the uh, report or its contents, other than items we're going to come back to later? If not, let's move on to the uh, second part of Article 3, which is to uh, elect uh, school directors uh, for various terms. Let's go first to the, yes, Patrick. Sorry to interrupt, but don't we need to vote on the motion to accept the report as written? Yeah. You can do that. You can do that. The Before we have a Ah, okay, that's why we lost it. So the motion has been made to accept the uh, report as presented with the noted uh, uh, notices of the typos and, and the, the miscues from the minutes. Is there a second to that motion? Uh, it was seconded. Okay, you guys are way ahead of me. Any further discussion on the minutes? Who, who seconded it? Who seconded it? I 
All right. Okay. All right. We'll leave that to the historians. Uh, so the motion has been made and seconded to accept the uh, report as presented with a couple of uh, errors and omissions noticed. Any further discussion? All those in favor of uh, accepting the report as just described, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, abstain. And it appears the report is accepted. The report is accepted. All right, now let's move on to electing school directors. The first uh, director to be elected is uh, a director from Woodbury for a term of three years. And I'll ask you for nominations for school director from Woodbury. Patrick Floyd. I nominate Phoebe Slater. Did you hear that? Phoebe Slater is nominated. Phoebe Slater is nominated. Are there any further nominations? Any further nominations for a Woodbury School Director for three years? Hearing none, with unanimous consent, we'll close nominations and uh, proceed to the vote. Uh, what is your pleasure with respect uh, to this? My name is Norman Etkin, uh, Woodbury. I make the motion that the department pass one ballot in favor of Phoebe Slater for this wonderful position. Thank you, Phoebe. Is there a second to this motion? Lorelei seconds. All right. It's been moved and seconded uh, that the uh, clerk cast one ballot for Phoebe Slater to fill the position of Woodbury District Director for a term of three years. All those in favor? Say aye. aye. All those opposed, abstaining, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Phoebe Slater is elected. Thanks, Phoebe. The next position is a school district director from Hardwick for a term of three years. Three years from Hardwick. Are there nominations? I nominate Catherine Ingram. Catherine Ingram is nominated. Sorry, Samantha Friend, Laurelie. <laughs> Are there other nominations for the position of school director representing Hardwick for a term of three years? Hearing none, by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations. And uh, what is your pleasure with respect to this? Or as Ainsworth, I make a motion that the clerk cast one ballot for Catherine Ingram for school director for three years. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Michael Gray from Woodbury. Motion has been made and seconded for the uh, clerk to cast one ballot for Catherine Ingram to be a school district director for a term of three years representing Hardwick. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, abstain. And Catherine Ingram is elected. The next position uh, is a Hardwick representative for a, a term of two years remaining on a three-year term. Are there nominations? Nominations for a Hardwick school director to fill out the remainder of a three-year term. Nominations. Anyone here from Hardwick willing to do it? I'll nominate you. <laughs> well. I have a question. <coughs> Yes. If no one is elected, who appoints the school board? The school who appoints board? the vacancy? Because this has been vacant since December and it has not been filled. The select board does. Uh, this, I, I understand uh, the select board does. Um, Would it be the select board from Hardwick? Yes. Because I know we had an issue over that with the Hazen representative. Yes, and the, the select board. School. That's right, and eventually the select board uh, appointed okay. under a state statute. <laughs> Um, it, but it's a uh, union. It was union. It's the same for union. But we just, at the time, didn't know what the union rule was. Whether it was the union board that appointed or the individual town. And Steve said they figured out it was the individual town. So it looks like that's what's going to happen. Right. Here. And if there's anyone from Hardwick here, I should warn you that if you don't elect somebody, you may be appointed. <laughs> so this is your last chance to nominate. 
Don't wait for that midnight phone call. No nominations? Okay, well, we'll pass over that, and, and uh, I think the select board will be dealing with this in short order. Are they aware that this is something they need to do? I'll make it's aware. happened before. Okay. It's happened before. Well, I just met currently. Well, I'll currently make them aware again. <laughs> All right. The last uh, school district director uh, to be elected is that uh, a director from Greensboro for a term of three years. Are there nominations for school director uh, from representing Greensboro for a term of three years? I nominate Rose Modry. Rose Modry. the friend again, Lorley. Is nominated. Are there other nominations for school director representing Greensboro for three years? Other nominations? Hearing none, by unanimous consent, we'll close uh, the uh, nominations. And uh, there is uh, only one person running for that uh, office, so what is your pleasure? Is there a motion for the uh, clerk to cast one ballot for Rose Modry? So moved. Catherine Ingram. Is there a second? second. Ginger and the peanut gallery, too. All right. So the motion has been made and seconded to uh, have the clerk cast one ballot for Rose Modry for the position of Greensboro representative uh, on the Union Elementary uh, Board for a term of three years. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those uh, in favor of the clerk casting one ballot for Rose Modry, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, abstain. And Rose Modry is elected Greensboro representative <coughs> for a term of three years. You, Congratulations. You, that completes Article 3. Let's move on to Article 4. Please listen to Article 4. Shall the voters of the school district authorize its school board to borrow money pending the receipt of payments from the member districts and state funds as provided in Title 16 of the Vermont Statutes. What is your pleasure? Patrick Flood. Uh, Patrick Flood, I, I move we pass the article as written. Uh, article 4 is moved. Is there a second? Norm and Lorelei simultaneously second. All right. So the motion is made and seconded. Uh, to as follows, shall the voters of the school district authorize its school board to borrow money pending the receipt of payments from the member districts and state funds as provided in Title 16 of the Vermont Statutes. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion on this article? Any further discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Article 4, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, abstained, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and Article 4 is passed. Uh, the next uh, article, uh, please listen to the next article. Uh, shall the voters of the school district approve the school board to expend $7,110,165 which is the amount the school board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year. It is estimated that this proposed budget, if approved, will result in education spending of $18,276 per equalized pupil. This projected spending per equalized pupil, pupil is 0.83% higher than the spending for the current year. And voting, actual voting on this budget, will be by Australian ballot on town meeting day, uh, Tuesday, August 3rd. Right. Up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thinking of my birthday again. All right. March 3rd. Thank you, all right. It's 2020. Um, is there any uh, discussion or comment you're permitted to talk about Australian ballot issues, even though? We're not voting here. It's in, it's in here because in case there was a typo or an error that you can correct it. Is that why? No. It's in, I'm just it's saying. It's in here because it's part of your legal meeting okay. and right. we vote on the budget for Australian ballot. Right. This cannot be amended. Okay. 
I'm just saying. I no. don't know. Yeah. Because it's part of the meeting. But the sec According to Robert's rules and state law, you have to put the budget in the meeting warning for the meeting that it goes to. The same with Hazen's next week. And then it says over on the end of the back page where you're going to vote and when it's going to take place. So do we have to pass over it or something? No, you can discuss it. Oh. Or if nobody has any questions, Steve will just read the next warning, the next article. So we take no action. You take no action, but it can be discussed. And if we were voting here today, we could still discuss it, like, because they've changed the rules on that. But we cannot vote on it and we cannot amend it. Okay. And you wanted a question. Well, uh, Patrick Foote again. I, I have several questions. I hope that's all right. Um, the first one is I don't understand why the article says approve if we're not approving. But we, I'm, I'm perfectly willing to let that go. Uh, I understand it's going to get voted on in Australian ballot. I, I have several questions, though, so please bear with me. And number one is the question I raised earlier, which is where can I find the detail about the surplus that was? What page are you looking at? 24. Uh, well, I, I was reading from uh, the principal's report, I believe. But the budget's on page 24. Yes, but if people are looking for the language that I'm referring to, of course, now I can't find it. Huh? Page 11. Page 11? Uh, under revenues for the budget. Uh, well, it actually, correct me if I'm wrong, principals, but I think you mentioned that in your report as well. But it doesn't matter. The point is, where is the dollar amount? It's in, if you look on page 10. 10. At the top under revenue and FY. Oh, thank you very much. It's got the surplus got it. slide. That's all I was looking for. No I don't problem. know why I couldn't find it. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't see it till just now either. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so that's one question. Now I have several questions on the actual budget summary. Um, and maybe before I get there, I'd like to make a comment. I understand why the board would apply the surplus. I was on the board for years. We pretty much always did that because it just makes sense to lower your tax rate in the year. But what it does is it masks the revenue versus expenses. Next year, you may not have that, right? And you're going to have the same expenses. So I just think mostly for the public record, i just like to say that while the increase this year and the tax rate increase this year looks very reasonable, it seems to me that unless there's something else you know that we don't know, that or we get lucky and have another big uh, surplus, we're going to have to make up that $462,000 worth of lost revenue next year because if we don't have it, we still have the same expenses. That's just a comment. I don't expect anybody to respond to it. But well, let, let me ask if somebody does want to respond by explaining uh, the reasons for that deficit and, and the, surplus. The, the, the surplus and uh, the reaction to use it uh, to offset against the budget. Is there somebody here? And we're taking certain measures this year and through the course of next year to uh, hopefully reduce costs by centralizing certain services at the SU level. Um, for example, this year uh, the OSSU board approved a stipend for a uh, food services position so that that person can look at the purchases uh, made for every school rather than each school purchasing on its own, um, you know, purchase as one entity, hopefully realize some savings there. There's also a stipend to position in there for uh, building facilities manager, um, <clears throat> looking at the same types of potential savings across the SU. And the hope is that we collect data over next year for these stipended positions. And if the data shows that, um, that savings have been realized, 
the idea is to eventually move toward uh, more permanent positions. They were originally put in the budget as permanent positions and then um, the uh, CFO in conjunction with the board and myself agreed that rather than you know, spend, I think it, it was uh, upwards of $200,000, we cut that, we turned them into stipends and we, say, oh, we said let's collect some data and see if they're actually working. So, so that addresses I think the first part of your question. to say that, should I take the mic? Yeah. Yes. Rose Modri, um, I just wanted to say um, partially that part of that story that I think some people in the community probably read in, in the minutes um, came from the fact that because of Act 46, because we were forced to merge, um, there was a, um, a penalty from the state um, for schools that were forced to merge rather than schools that opted to merge and that um, that affected our per equalized pupil um, and so that was a um, aspect of the budget that we didn't realize and so that surplus was sort of taken um, to, to cover that. Is that a good, is that a it's not entirely clear explanation, but um, the idea was that in the future we would know that that was the case, that we didn't know this year that that was going to be the case. So in the future we would be aware of that aspect. Yeah, there were, we had, um, you know, they were often referred to as phantom students, um, and the, the state took those away. So what used to be a floor kind of dropped on us, and that's true across, across the state, not only for um, forced mergers, but even for schools that uh, just chose not to merge. Uh, we're not even asked to, but, but didn't. So probably the majority of, uh, of the schools across the state. So it was, it was une unexpected, like Rose said, and we'll be able to hopefully plan better for it next year. Patrick. Thank you, Rose. Uh, don't, don't, don't let me uh, monopolize the microphone here. Um, so that's a great explanation, uh, Superintendent Rosenberg. I, I really appreciate what you're trying to do there and the way you went about it. So thank you for that. Um, now the other questions are just looking for some specifics because it is just a budget summary. So for example, under general ed instruction in the summary, there is a reduction in expenses right um of a hundred and eighty one thousand dollars is that actual reduction of ex of ed education or is that just moving money again so so at this point i'm going to refer you to uh what is it march 2nd i, I think these are questions better left for the budget meeting when, when our cfo will be present the budget informational but, meeting. Budget informational meeting. Well, uh, that's fine. March second is the night before the vote. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I find that a little problematic, that the information comes the night before the vote. But I, I'm, I, that's okay. I'm willing to to wait. I would just like to say, for the record, I mean, I'm going to support this budget. I support the schools. This is not an issue there. But I think. We are all entitled to understand the ups and the downs, and this level of information is, is just, for the written report, is just inadequate, that's all. And, okay, so I'll, I'll be back on the second. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that um, you know, it isn't inadequate, but that's definitely the forum to, to tell us it is. Because we don't have, um, you know, I spoke to the CFO today, and we talked about how this meeting is, uh, you know, more for the for the articles, and that we have a special budget meeting scheduled. So, in order for you to okay. get the answers, I think you deserve. I, I prefer to. Okay, I just want to make an editorial comment that having been on school board on and off for about 15 years, I I don't find it helpful to the public to only provide a summary. We used to get in the entire budget. Yes. I, I knew how much we were spending on supplies. Um, so anyway, that's my two cents on that. And I agree with you. 
Th this might be a question that's less appropriate for the second as opposed to tonight. So on the next page, under uh, <coughs> budget notes, and there's a summary section, it says that the equalized pupils have gone down by 19.83. And my question is, can you tell us in the detail of which, but, um, can you break that down by town? Is there any town specific information about, or don't we do that anymore? Do I know how many fewer equalized pupils there are in Woodbury, for example? So do you want it by the, by the, sorry. Do you want it by the school that they're attending, or do you want it by the town they live in? Because we're now, just because they live in Woodbury doesn't mean they go to right. Woodbury. So right. what, I'm, I'm not- I'm actually more interested in the town in myself, the town. if you have that information. Do we have that? And I don't need it tonight. We don't have it tonight. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. I mean, is it broken out like that somewhere? I would imagine. Probably could. And I wanted to say about the budget informational meeting versus this meeting and where we get all this information, I'm pretty sure that we're required by law to have the informational meeting 10 days before, which unfortunately doesn't fall on this day and would mean that if we were going to do it earlier, no, earlier than the second, then it would have to be in the middle of the week off. So the decision to make the... I would have preferred that this whole thing all happen together, but be, in order to make the meeting fall and the timing, we felt that it would make more sense to have it as close to town meeting as possible because of vacation. So fully understand what you're saying, but just to give you a little backstory with that. Norman, did you have a question? Yeah, uh, Norman from Woodbury, and, and uh, I'll raise the point, that, and I'm, I have to apologize because I was trying to dig into these numbers during part of your explanation. Maybe you covered this, but I see um, for the FY21 proposed, you're looking at a surplus supplied of uh, about $500,000, but I don't see any surplus showing from the F20 approved budget. So where does that come from? March 2nd. Okay. <laughs> you can't get that answer until March 2nd. March 2nd, I hear is the superintendent's uh, suggestion for pitching the question. Well, so you have no idea where that number comes from? Nobody knows. So the, so the, F, the FY20 approved, the FY20 approved was the money that was approved to be spent, but it wasn't what actually was spent, right? Victoria, help me. Yes, <laughs> The surplus supply will be from FY19, not from FY20. Yes. There you go. It's a two-year gap. We are currently in FY20, so they don't even know if they have a surplus yet. They won't know until probably December of this year, after the audit is completed. Is Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And Victoria? It's like a two-year gap. Okay. All right. Well, that helps explain. Or is it, and also with the... Yes. Surplus from 19 is from the three individual communities put together because you all just went through the audit individually for the three school districts right. and then because of the merger, the surplus flows into the new district for the next school budget and that's how it works. Um, your financial officer will know and with the detailed reports, the board members have been made aware of this I'm sure because in the past. But they. Sorry. Right. That was a brand new mic. Um, was. But they didn't anticipate <laughs> these questions tonight, and that's why they don't have the material with them. And the chief financial officer, John Smith, is not here to answer all the specifics because that's his job. <coughs> Ginger Atkin, um, Woodbury. So. I would point out that this timing will not change year to year, town meetings the same time, President's Week the same time, and School Vacation Week is the same time. <clears throat> and what voters, at least in this room tonight, would like more information and we would like it sooner. We are capable of understanding a complete budget and the details. So 
I would hope that at some point during the coming year, a different schedule would be created so that we can have that information to vote on whether we're going to support the budget or not. We'd like to know what, where it's going. Now do it to the next person. I'm ready to give this back to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it to me, I'll drop it. Are there any more questions uh, related to Article 5? Which will be uh, the school budget, which will be voted on on March 3rd this year. The hearing is at 7 on the second year. 7 o'clock? Yeah. Budget hearing is at 7 o'clock. Seven o'clock, Norman. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah. Where's the microphone? Oh. Sorry, I'm not paying attention. Um, Fire me. Yeah, I, I think the uh, you know so the budget hearing is uh, the second. I wonder, you know, it's been raised a couple of times to be able to see the entire budget. Is that available online somewhere? How can one access it prior to that meeting? If you want, people wanted to get into the sort of dollars and cents. Yeah, it's currently not available. Um, you know, what, what you're asking for, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with uh, any district that presents an entire budget to the community, let alone even to the board. Um, I've never gotten into that level, but I mean, I'm not saying it's not doable. It's, uh, this is the Northeast Kingdom, different culture, like I said. Um, and I can certainly talk to the CFO about that. But it's currently not available. why that it's, it's it's public information obviously there's no reason why it can't be accessible for voters to take a look at it right um like i said it, it's it's not general practice in terms of my own experience i think that it it leads to uh potential digging in the weeds um but you're right it is it is public information and also it's fairly valid so it's not it won't even take any time to get into the weeds. It's just the yeah. information that if people want to delve into, they should be able to and, and are able to because they can stop by your office and see it if they wanted to. Yeah. Um, so there's no well, reason why not. not to make it accessible. I'll, I'll talk to the board about that. Anyway, here's a thought. Adam, if you had looked at the last year's reports, another piece that's missing is Harvard Elementary School Board, Harvard Town School Board. Same had requests from numerous citizens to list the salaries of all the employees of the school district. That has been in the town report, school report, for at least the last 10 years. The full budget has always been in the town reports for these school districts, and our voters are used to it. I was shocked when I received this that it was not in there. And not making it available online, John can simply connect that to the website tomorrow and it should be available. And I would highly recommend that you look at past reports, even though this is a new district and this is the first annual report they've printed, look at past reports for the three towns and put back into the report the information that our voters expect to have. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rose, you had a question then Sam. I think mine was just about what Ori said. I think historically that people have seen that list at town, um, in their town report. Um, and so I was just going to speak to that historical aspect of what voters would expect to see. So I, I may be incorrect, and so I apologize. I'm trying to look at our minutes from our last meeting. Can you guys hear me? I can't. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay, thank you. I saw Victoria. Um, it sounds like we've tried to discuss when to have our annual meeting, our budget meeting, yes. and whatnot. And so I hear you that the budget being on a different time is, is not ideal, but it's the way I'm reading it is that the district voters decided to do it that way. So. Steve Murphy. Mm -hmm. Or. Somebody else. Alberta Miller, Alberta. Town Clerk for Hartwick, and also the District Treasurer. Um, 
That is absolutely what they decided last year and the, and the timing of it. However, I don't think that there's any reason why that it couldn't be presented tonight for those people who came out. Um, so for next year, I think that that probably is something you need to add to your to your warning and part of your meeting is that you will have an available discussion and have actual numbers and actual information for people when they come to this meeting. Because this is our annual meeting. So this is the one that a lot of people actually feel is the important one to come to. But you still have to have the official budget hearing. Steve Murphy. Hello, Stephen Murphy from Woodbury. I want to thank all the directors for serving on this new board and the administrators. This is our first year as a, as a merged district. This will take us some time to, to smooth out any of these rough spots to the extent that we can. Uh, regarding disclosure of the, the full budget, I think we should err on the side of, of disclosure. If that is a public document, then we should make it available. Um, and it would likely, um, would likely, uh, providing the information, would likely make the, the meeting on the second more productive, more fruitful. So I concur with, I think, the unanimous or the uh, consensus here that it would be best to have that information as soon as possible. Thank you. Any more discussion uh, related to <clears throat> Article 5, the budget, to be voted on on March 3rd? Any more discussion? Hearing none, let's move on to Article 6. Please listen to Article 6. To determine whether to authorize the Board of School Directors pursuant to the provisions of 16 VSA Section 563, subsection 10, and subsection 11C to provide mailed notice to residents of the availability of the annual report and proposed school budget in lieu of distributing the annual report and proposed budget. What is your pleasure? Is there a motion? To get it on the floor, I move Article 6 is read. Is there a second? Victoria seconds. All right. What? Yes, it is. That's the way you have to word it. So you're saying in your proposal of the annual report. So if a yes vote you provide it, a no vote you don't. Send it to us, Carter. I think if, if the words or not were inserted after whether it would be a little clearer. All right, so the motion has been made and seconded. Um, is there any discussion on this motion? All right, Saints. All right, Ainsworth. I strongly urge you to vote no. Hazen is doing this for the first time this year. It said this, and I got the fancy little postcard. I went to Hazen twice. Nobody knew what I was talking about. I did not have time to stop and see the town clerk because when I go through, she's not open or she's already closed. And I wasn't going to come down the center road special for that. And the little bit that you pay to have this mailed to the constituents and your voters is well worth the public relations. To not receive anything in the mail from the school in the past, they've always been included with the town report. And I realize doing district, union districts, that that's kind of hard because you have to put it in four town reports and mailing one. I was really glad to receive this one. And I finally got a copy today. I went into the super's office. She had to print me a copy because they have no hard copies available. So if someone came in and they had to wait, it would take a couple minutes. Whereas if you had some printed and mailed, people would have them. They would talk about them with their neighbors. You can't talk about a postcard. And I strongly urge you to vote no because I don't believe enough citizens are going to get copies that they're going to even bother coming to meetings. We have trouble getting them to meetings, but at least they're educated. Patrick Flo. <clears throat> so I know I'm starting to annoy people, but, uh, you know, uh, 
Orise and I are old school. <laughs> There's no question about it. Even old, Patrick. Old, older than old school. Um, but I completely agree with her. I, I, the first question is, how much do you spend to print and mail the report? Can anybody answer that question for us? March 2nd. March 2nd. March 2nd. It's in the budget. Well, or it's not in the budget. I get a chuckle out of that, but really, you should be able to tell us. But anyway, um, it's not that much. I, I come from, from a philosophy of basically what Stephen was saying, which is more information is better than not, a, not much. Because if people think you're hiding stuff, if people think you're not being straightforward, it will come back to bite you. At least put, give them the information. I know that 90% of the people don't even read the report. I know that. But at least they had an opportunity and they have no excuse. And I think that's a good investment. If it costs $5,000, I don't know, could cost that much to print and mail that many <coughs> reports, I think that's a hell of a good investment in a $7 million budget, honestly. Especially with all the flux and the change. So I. I, I'm going to vote no against this, uh, I, at least for now. Maybe in future years we can change our minds. Victoria. I'm Victoria, and I'm going to be old school, too. <laughs> I would agree. I think the postcard for the Hazen budget I found kind of ineffective. I, had a, I actually had a hard time finding the Hazen budget in the Google Doc atmosphere. So that, then I'm not a total. Um, totally inefficient online, so for, for folks that are really not very good at utilizing the internet, I think that it reduces accessibility for them. So I would encourage you to look into having a printed copy go out by mail. And with the Hazen budget, too, all rolled into one fancy packet, just like the SU budget is in here this year. Anyway, so I'm going to vote no, too. <coughs> Is there any further discussion on Article 6? Any further discussion on Article 6? If uh, there is not, let's proceed. Lorelai? No. I'm just going to move all the questions, please. Okay, we're doing that. Um, now, l let me tell you the consequences of your vote. I'll state the question in the positive. And you should know that the current practice is to send, send out the reports. All right, so I will pitch the question to you uh, as if I'm saying, shall the board, uh, shall the voters? You have to read the motion. Right, I just want to explain the, the, the consequences. This article asks you to instruct that the reports not be sent, that only postcards should be sent, which is a change from present practice. So if you want to change present practice, you should vote yes. No. Yes. Yes. Order. All right. To determine whether to authorize. So my motion was to determine whether to authorize. So you vote yes if you want to authorize. But to provide mailed notice to residents of the availability of the report right. proposed in lieu of distributing the annual report and right. proposed budget. Okay. So, so no, right now, no. right now, reports are distributed through. So if we vote yes, it means they will not mail the postcard. Right. Okay. Thank you. Everybody, no, follow no, that. No, no, no. That's not correct. Yes, if you vote. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry. Could you just read the article? Yeah. Yeah, just read the article. Well, I, I want to make sure there, there's, and the moderator may be confused on this, but you have to be a, alert to the consequences of your vote. So we have to get this down. Let me read the article again. To determine whether to authorize the Board of School Directors pursuant to the provisions of 16 VSA, Section 563, 10, and 11C, to provide mailed notice to residents of the availability, the availability of the annual report and proposed school budget in lieu of, meaning instead of, distributing the annual report and proposed budget. 
or us? The first part is determine whether to authorize. If you say yes, you are authorizing them to mail a postcard in lieu of the report. Yes. So I do not want that to happen, therefore I am voting no. Right. right. Okay, but that's not what you said to start with. Okay. Right. So now we understand I, it. So right. if you do if you want a book, vote no. <laughs> right. Otherwise you're going to get a postcard. Right? Thank you. We all on the same page then? Yes. Okay. All right. So then uh, let me call the question to you. All those in favor of Article 6, please say aye. All those opposed, no. 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 Abstentions? The article fails. Article 6 fails. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll go to the last article of the meeting, which is to transact any other business that may legally come before the meeting. Is there any other business to come before the meeting? There's a bunch of hands up. Norman, you were first. Yeah, yeah, just, a, just a curious question. Um, never before did we ask for abstentions. So what's the story with it? All Rise always asks for abstentions. <laughs> you don't look like it. That's what I learned from All Rise. That gives a board or the public the opportunity to voice that either they're abstaining because you're voting for me and I don't want to vote for myself, or I'm on a board and a board is voting and someone has a personal interest and should not be voting one way or the other and has okay. an abstention. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. No, that's reasonable. Okay. Robert's rules taught me that. Okay. <laughs> See how people are educated. Word of mouth and references. Yes, Patrick. I, I just want to take a minute to thank the board and, and the administration for all your hard work on what must be a really difficult time mm. to blend these three districts together and everything that goes with it. So, in spite of all my questions, thank thank you. I just you know. Um, Reciprocally, reciprocally, I'd like to thank you for showing up. And yeah. you know, you apologized earlier for um, annoying folks. You, you're not annoying anyone. This is this is totally right and appropriate to ask questions, <laughs> and you're asking for any questions. Oh, maybe some folks in the audience. I, I should have spoken to you, but but I think for the folks up here, you know, we appreciate the questions. Actually, you may be annoyed by some of the answers. Your questions are. Some Phoebe Slater. Um, I guess I just think, you know, it's like I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. I'm feeling, you know, I felt a little uncomfortable that why didn't we get this report and, you know, in those details. And I'm just sort of thinking in my head as I'm new to this newly merged board, you know, when I was on Woodbury, it's, you know, Diana was amazing and was like, so are we ready? We got to get this report and we've got this. And then the, our town clerk, I feel like, and maybe I missed something along the way, not being a uh, chair you know, on the, having a, an office, I can't even, <laughs> an officer, right? But um, so before on the, when we were just on the town board, it ran differently and I guess I was expecting that to sort of just happen and it didn't because we're now merged with all these different towns. And so we do need to kind of, when it comes time to this thing, who, what reports are we getting out? Who is responsible for making sure they get out? And so I apologize for just not being on top of that, but that's, that's new to me, so. Diane. I just have a question that might or might not be germane. When is it that this merge board, when is it that the merge board is gonna to go to the other, um, for other representation? Okay. And somebody answered that. that. I was going to do that at the, my, my comment, if I could continue, unless Catherine wants to do it. Well, no, I was, go ahead. Okay, because that was my comment for this section, is just a reminder that a year from now, the board makeup changes, goes to four from Herdwick and one each from Woodbury Greens Grown Standard, and they're Australian ballot. So I was going, yes, they're Australian ballot. No, it's not the right makeup. 
That's what I. Okay, did we change? I, I believe it's two Greensboro, two Woodbury. One Sorry. One Stanner, okay, two Greensboro, two well, Woodbury, the, four Hardwick. Five I found, Hardwick. Sorry. I found the articles that I had at home. So whatever, but it's a new board. Yep and is voted Australian ballot at town meeting. So I just wanted to urge this board to connect with your town clerks in December to educate you because I know in Woodbury Greensboro and Standard you've never elected board members by Australian ballot. And there's a process. And it has to be done by the end of January to get you on the ballot. And, um, we voted the articles different, they're not in the minutes. Because we had a separate vote on the articles, and the articles I found said we do board members by Australian ballot. So the next time I'm in the super's office, I'm gonna get a final copy. I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure that we don't vote it. We actually have to, we have to change that we're voting it to Australian ballot. If we don't change it, then we will continue to vote them from the floor, regardless of the makeup of the board. That is not something that, it, that does, the, how the board members are elected does not change when the makeup of the board changes. We voted to do it from the floor. We have to change to vote to do it by Australian ballot. Right, exactly. It has to be an article. So it would have to be. No, it's on page 17 when we voted that down. So we're voting board members we in. Didn't vote the articles at this meeting. They were voted Australian ballot. We voted article number six was to determine whether to elect board members of the district board by Australian ballot. And there's a lot of discussion in there. Okay. And it was voted down. And we said, Jennifer Laundry, Jen Laundry suggested that anyone at any time can petition the board to switch to Australian ballot voting. So, okay, yep, okay. so we can change it, but it's not going to change unless we change it. Okay. 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 It's okay. We can't change it this year. So next year it will be from the floor again. Someone can petition between now and next March. Okay. Okay. Or we can put it on the morning for next time. I, I'd just like to voice one concern with that change in distribution in that right at the moment, Hartwick only has one representative and seems to have a hard time coming up with a second. Oh, so when there are going to be four or five people from Hartwick, how many vacancies will there be? Um, you know, that's a little concerning to me at this point in time. Yep. And I agree, but nowhere did I see the board up until yesterday let the people of Hardwick know that they were short a board member. It was. I don't remember paper. seeing it in the paper. I don't remember seeing on front porch form. It was in the paper. And it should have been every meeting somebody should have been posting for it. It, it was in the paper in one of the articles, I believe, that they had in there. We did not get a advertisement out as Wilkett did, and it was in front porch forum. So it's, I'm still new. It, it's, no, it hasn't been consistently. You're right, you're right. I make a motion we adjourn. Thank you. A second. The motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. Any further discussion? It's not debatable. It's not debatable, <laughs> in fact. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And if you abstain, good for you. The meeting is adjourned.